Hello, hello. I hope everybody is having a good day. I hope everyone is ready to learn some English. I hope that you're prepared for a lesson about art. I hope that you are uh, curious. I hope that you are excited and I hope that you are ready to start learning in about 26 seconds. Just gonna double check to make sure everything is working. Excellent. I should probably do a little focus check for a sec. Will it focus on my hand? Yes. Will it focus back on me? Yes. Good. I like to test the camera now because it was untrustworthy a couple of times. We'll start in four seconds everybody. Three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about art. Um art is an interesting thing in the world. There are many people who create things that we like to look at. In this English lesson about art, I'll primarily be talking about visual art. Things like paintings and sculptures and I'll get into it in a bit once we get into the lesson. There are of course things like music and other things that are considered arts as well but this lesson will mostly be about the kind of art that uh, you would use if you wanted to make a nice painting like this hummingbird that you see here. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about art. You might be wondering how I come up with my topics. Well, I'll tell you how I came up with this topic. At the beginning of the week, a teacher at my school, the art teacher, wasn't able to come to work for the day. Maybe they were sick. I'm not sure. So, I was asked to sub that class. Teachers sometimes sub other teachers' classes. That means you go and teach for them if they're sick. So, I had to sub an art class. I was the substitute teacher and as I sat in the art class watching the students uh, create works of art, I thought, hey, I should do an English lesson about art. So, that's why this week's lesson is about art. Before we get started, a couple of things. Remember, if you have a question, please use the form to ask it. There is a link in the chat. Click the link. You'll go to a form. Use that form to ask your question. Also, use the chat to your advantage. Have good English conversations while you are hanging out and learning a little bit of English. Do you wanna say hi to a few people? Hi to Paco and Tony, Vitor, Lolly Lolly, Noriko, Alette, Daria. I'm just randomly saying hi to people. Audie, the tie is here. CS team, uh, Stas, Vitor. I think I said hi to Vitor. Dave, the Canadian is here to moderate. Awesome to see you. Uh, I think though, instead of just spending the whole lesson saying hi, I'll just say hi, everyone. And I think we'll get this lesson started. Are you ready for this English lesson about art? Hopefully, you are. So, as I said, I'm primarily in this English lesson going to be talking about visual arts. The visual arts are any type of art where you can see it. So, I will get into all the details in a bit but the visual arts can be anything such as oh, this is a little low. Let me fix this for a sec. There we go. That's where I like to see it. The visual arts are anything like paintings, sketches, drawings, sculptures. I'm kind of giving away the next part of the lesson though but the visual arts would be any type of art that you can see and appreciate. Sometimes, we talk about a piece of art as a work of art. We usually use this phrase to talk about a very famous painting you know, this is a famous work of art I believe from Van Gogh. Uh, Bedrooms at Arles, I think it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm not an art expert. I'm an English expert. So, um but we would consider this a work of art. Um when you are a painter and you become well known, you create a lot of works of art that people enjoy looking at. If I did a painting, I wouldn't call it a work of art. I would just call it a painting by Bob. Um but if I became a famous painter, I would certainly start to uh, refer to it as that I have several works of art for sale. I would it's it's a way to it's it's a more formal way to talk about art that you've created. And then, we also have the term artwork. Artwork simply refers to any drawings that are maybe used in a book. Um if I was a painter, I could say, oh, I have a lot of artwork in my studio. Um so, artwork is just another way to talk about things that you have created. Things you have drawn or things you have painted. We would call that artwork. We also use it when you have 
Like if you write a book, you might hire someone to create artwork for the book. Th this would refer to the drawings and illustrations that would be in the book. And of course, a person who creates art is called an artist. Um there are many different types of artists in the world. This person I would say is a graffiti artist. They are making artwork on the wall of a building using paint. Um but anyone who is creative and likes to make things or to paint things or draw things, we would call them an artist. You might be a sculptor. A sculptor is someone who makes um statues and sculptures. That's the name of the thing they make out of stone or wood or other types of material. So, painting is a very flat type of art but sculpture is very three dimensional. Uh when you have something made by a sculptor, it has size and shape. So, if you go to your local park, there might be some statues that were created by a sculptor. We would certainly refer to someone who likes to create art, someone who is creative as being artistic. You could say she's very artistic. Her paintings are amazing. He's very artistic. He has a real eye for color. He's very artistic. He does beautiful pencil sketches. So, if someone is really good at creating art, if they have talent, we would say that they are artistic. Uh and they might get that talent um naturally or they might get that talent from taking an art class. So, art classes like the class I was in the other day are you'll learn how to paint with oil or with watercolors. You'll learn how to sketch with a pencil. You might learn how to create something out of crayon or clay. So, art class is a place where you go where there is usually a teacher who is very artistic who teaches you how to create artwork of different types. You can see these people here are in art class. They are learning how to create art. Now, you also might just be a natural. In English, this is a bigger term than just the art world but in the art world, if you were to say he's a natural or she's a natural, it means the person is able to create really cool works of art and they don't have a lot of training. They've just on their own learned how to do it. They're a very creative person and they just know how to put colors together and how to paint and how to make something beautiful. We would call that person a natural. We also use this to talk about athletes or someone who's good at anything just very easily. Um if you handed your friend a guitar and if your friend didn't have guitar lessons and they could quickly learn to play a song, you might say, oh, uh he's a natural. Different types of artwork. So, I've kind of mentioned most of these. There is something called drawing where you simply take a pencil or pen or something we call a marker, maybe a crayon or a pencil crayon and you simply take a piece of paper and you draw something. You look at something and try to reproduce it or if you're more creative, you try to draw something in a very artistic way. So, drawing is certainly one way that people create art. You might like to sketch. This is a sketch. Um so, I've just used it as a verb and a noun. Did you notice that? He likes to sketch sketches. You could say that. A sketch is usually a quick drawing usually done with a pencil. Um and then if you were to start to color it and refine it and improve it, we would probably refer to it as a drawing. But if you just sit down and simply take a pencil and quickly sketch uh, a picture onto a piece of paper, we would refer to it as a sketch. Um and we would use the verb sketch to talk about it. So, you might sit down to sketch a sketch if you have some spare time. And then we also have of course, painting. So, when you like to paint, you will create a painting. You can see this person has their paint brushes and they have either paper or canvas and they are creating a painting. Um you could also say that they are painting. Notice how we can flip these words around a little bit. Um in art class, they are going to be painting today. 
They are going to be painting their paintings. You could say that as well in English. Little tricky but that is how the English language works. Uh as I referred to before, a sculptor makes sculptures. Should I pronounce that again? A sculptor, let me zip back really quickly. A sculptor creates sculptures. So, this is a sculpture of a lion. Uh, I think this might be in France. I don't know. I should have looked this up but a sculpture again is a three-dimensional, a 3D um piece of art or work of art. So, you take marble or stone or wood and you use a hammer and chisel and you kind of fashion that material into something that looks more realistic like this line. So, there you have a sculpture. Uh, I think this line is in France. I usually know where my pictures are from but I forget with this one. Um and then we also have something called a statue and you might be wondering uh what's the difference between a statue and a sculpture? Well, I didn't know this until yesterday. I just learned something new. Apparently, a statue is a sculpture of a person or animal. In order for something to be called a statue, at least my understanding of this, I could be wrong, a statue needs to be a person, uh, an image of a person or an image of an animal and then it can be called a statue. I didn't know that till yesterday. Hey, let's look at some questions everybody. Let me do an audio check as well. Let me make sure everything is working. Everything sounds great. I see people in the chat are chatting about art. That is awesome. Let me see how many questions we have and let me get the first question up on the screen. Uh let's see here from Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Hope you're enjoying the autumn. I am not very good at art. But bouquets that Jen makes are really masterpieces. Have a fun lesson ahead. Thank you very much. Jen is very artistic when she arranges flowers. I would agree. And Yaroslav, I am not very artistic either. In fact, at the end of the lesson, I will show you the kind of art that I'm able to create. It's not something I made but wait till the last slide and you'll see. And the last thing I wanted to say is I forgot to put the word masterpiece in this lesson. A masterpiece is an extremely well made piece of art. So, thanks for adding that word, Yaroslav. Uh from Le Nguyen. Hello, Bob. Have a good day. You too. Very, very much. Renata says, hello, I have no talent for art but I know art is an archaic form of British English as in thou art you are. I love old English. Thou art awesome, Bob. Thank you for the lesson. Well, thank you very much. Um yes, the these and thous um are not very common anymore. You might hear them um if you watch a TV show about old um like the olden days but uh definitely. Let's see here from Curtis. Hi, Uncle Bob. Thanks. Do you I like being called Uncle Bob. It's kind of it's like an honorific we would call it. It shows that you have respect for me. So, I'm very humbled and flattered. So, thank you. Do you ever go to a painting exhibition with Jen? I'm gonna switch Jen. Dear uncle, I suggest you do a lesson about mental health and protecting our environment next week. I will add that to the list of ideas. If it works out, I'll see if I can do that. Um no, Jen and I haven't been to an art oh, sorry, not no. We haven't been to an art exhibition for a very long time. We have not. So, uh let's see here. Zhao says, hello, teacher Bob. How are you doing? When it comes to art, I think of Van Gogh's famous painting of sunflowers being poured with canned tomatoes a while ago. That was also something that prompted me to think about doing a lesson about art. The news story about the people who threw tomato soup on the painting but the painting was protected. So, that's good. Definitely good. Raymond says, I'm an independent filmmaker. I want to hire your acting. Do you do that? I haven't done any acting. But uh send me an email, Remo, and I'll see. I I've never been an actor but by the way, uh being a filmmaker and filmmaking are both considered um art as well. So, very cool, Remo. Judith says, hi, Bob. Are you feeling tranquility when observing art? Have a great weekend. Yes, my students in French class do a lesson uh where they have to reproduce a piece of French art and it's very, very cool. I do find that looking at art 
brings a sense of peace and tranquility. It's probably why we have art for sure. Uh next question from Musa. Hello, hello. Good morning, Bob. Question one. Are you a fan of art? Yes. I don't have any art in my studio. I should get some art for my studio. Um but I do have a really nice photo. I should maybe show you guys that in a sec. And number two. Oh, and then Musa says, I make one art every day. Very cool. And question two. Will you become Pablo Picasso? No, I won't become Pablo Picasso. Wait a sec. I'm gonna grab a photo that I have that I need to hang up. I think you'll like it. There used to be a long time ago, there was, well, a long time ago, there was a tree across the river and Jen took this photo and she got it turned into what's called a print for me. Let me hold it up a bit better. So, this is a picture of the tree taken in the early morning. Um so, I really, really like that picture. Um I really, really liked that tree. That tree was there my entire life until the wind blew it over. Um I think a year and a bit ago. So, it was very kind of Jen to uh get that picture um blown up. That's when you make a picture bigger, blown up and to have it put on canvas. So, that was a really nice gift. Henry from Taiwan. Let me have a sip of water here for a second. Hi, teacher Bob. Do you have any paintings to decorate your house? What genre of art would you appreciate? Thank you. No, we don't have any paintings but we do have a lot of photographs like the picture of the tree that I just showed you. Jen likes to take pictures. And then she likes to get them blown up and made into what's called a print. So, we do have a lot of pictures of flowers, trees, um dogs, cats, those kinds of things. So, that's what we have. Mostly uh photographs in our house. Ario says, wow, great. You're substitute an art teacher. Then you come up with this lesson. Are you good at making art? No, I'm not. I'm using Windows 11 so I can listen to you while writing. Oh, that's cool. Nice. I have not updated yet to Windows 11. Orser says, hi, Bob. Is it possible to use the word carver instead of sculptor? Yes. So, when you work with wood, we would, you are correct, most more likely say you are a wood carver. Um although the word sculptor can be used to talk about any type of of carving like that. Um but yes, carver would be a better word or wood carver to talk about someone using wood. How do I get your photo to post in the comment? I think you have to be a member and then you get access to those four little emojis. Sukani says, hello, teacher Bob. Do you have ice sculpting festival in Canada? Yes, definitely. In the northern parts of Canada, people will get large blocks of ice and then they will do ice carving or ice sculpting. You can use both words. Darius says, Hi, Bob. What direction in art would you choose if you were told that they would give you a talent for this? I would be a painter. Yes, I haven't done very much painting but if I was told we will give you an amazing art talent, what talent would you like? I would I think I would want to be a painter. Zhao says, good morning, Bob. How are you? Do you like old art? I do. In particular, I do like Van Gogh. The picture I showed earlier of the bedroom, there's actually three versions of that picture. Uh, Van Gogh did that a lot I think with sunflowers as well. There's a lot. I think if you go to the Van Gogh museum, you can see that. That would be a fun place to go someday. Freddie, no artist. Hi, Bob. I have no question so far. I just want to say you're a great artist in the art of teaching. Well, thank you. Your videos are artistic in some way. Bonne journée à toi. Merci beaucoup, Freddie. Thank you for that compliment. Let's see here. Let's do one more question. Couple more questions and we'll get back to the lesson. Hi, our teacher Bob. If you can tell us some of the famous proverbs such as one, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, let's just focus on that one. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Basically, what it means is if you eat healthy food, you will not need to go to the doctor. If you eat healthy food, you will be healthy. Um I'm trying to think of an art idiom. Um a picture's worth a thousand words. Is that a good one? Uh, or it's in the eye of the beholder. That's another one maybe. Here we go. Sophia says, hello, dear teacher. What's your favorite style of painting? I really love impressionist. What about you? I am not overly familiar with all of this of the styles of painting 
but I do like modern art. I like when people have a new fresh look on things. So, you'll have to look up that on YouTube or on uh Google modern art. Uh one more question and back to the lesson. Kuhn, hello teacher Bob. My question is, are movies a form of art? Yes. In fact, I have a slide coming up later where where I will talk about all the different art forms in the world. Hey, if you are one of the 360 people watching, hi. Welcome to this English lesson about art. Uh don't forget to click that red subscribe button if you're new here. Um you'll get notified when I make new videos. Let's see where am I at here? Good. Here we go. Photography. So, art isn't just about painting. It isn't just about sculpture. It isn't just about um making things in a creative way. Sometimes, it's about using technology and there's two types of technology in particular. Um well, I guess one. There's the still camera and the video camera. If you're using a camera like this, you are doing what's called photography. You are taking pictures of things around you. You have an eye for looking at the world and framing it in a way where you can take a beautiful picture. Um it's definitely an art. The ability to take pictures that are beautiful is definitely an art but you also do need like I said some technical skills but photography very cool. Um I would say Jen is very much into photography and she's very good at it. There's also filmmaking or making videos or videography. Uh you can be a videographer um but I would just say the artistic way to talk about video would be to use the term filmmaking and the term filmmaker. By the way, someone who likes photography is a photographer. Someone who likes filmmaking is a filmmaker. So, if you like to use your video camera to make films, you would be a filmmaker. If you like to tell stories using film, we would say that you are a filmmaker. Very, very cool type of art. And we also have digital art. So, this didn't exist. 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I wonder when digital art started. But digital art is the use of a computer to either manipulate images, create images, um put images together like this picture here is a combination of images. Digital art is very, very cool. In fact, I referred to earlier I said I like modern art. I think I like digital art right now. Uh in fact, right now there are computers that make images and people call that uh AI art, artificial intelligence art. I'm not sure that's real art. I think people have to make art for it to be real but digital art is art made using a computer either creating images, enhancing images, making them better, manipulating images, changing them or combining images in different ways. Digital art. An artist, a painter, We'll use what's called an easel. Now, this isn't a very good picture here of an easel. The easel is the wooden thing that this artist has put their canvas on. So, if you look behind the white canvas, you will see a piece of wood sticking out the top and a couple wooden legs at the bottom. Uh this is what's called an easel. An artist will set up their easel on the street outside, maybe in their studio. And then they will use that to hold the paper or canvas or whatever they are painting on. So, that is an easel. They will of course, if you are a painter, you will use a brush. You can just call it a brush. You can also call it a paintbrush. Um artists have lots of different kinds of paintbrushes. Thick paintbrushes, thin paintbrushes, small paintbrushes, large paintbrushes um and depending on what type of paint they are using. They might have different kinds of brushes as well but I think we most often just call it a brush. A painter will use brushes. When you say paintbrush, it just feels like too many words. It's very common but um I think if I was to talk about an artist, I would say um the artist is coming later today with their easel and their brushes and their paints and they're going to paint something. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're just doing a simple drawing or sketch, you will probably use a pencil. This person has what's called, 
I think it might be an HB pencil or a number two pencil. I don't know the exact specifics but there are different types of pencils for doing artwork or sketching or drawing and I think it 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 the it's the softness of the lead in the pencil I think that changes but this person has decided to use a pencil to draw a little cat and of course when children are young and even older artists um when children are young they often use crayons. A crayon is um a colored type of pencil that's very soft. It ha- it's usually made of wax or some other soft material um but our children always had crayons when they were younger. In fact, in Ontario, Canada, when you go to a restaurant with your children, if it's a restaurant where you sit down, the waiter might bring crayons and some paper for your kids to draw on or color on while you're waiting for your food if they're really young. So, anyways, a crayon is kind of a waxy writing tool um that is most often used by kids but sometimes used by adult artists as well. And then we have chalk. This is something that teachers are used to but some artists also use chalk because it allows them to use these soft nice colors. If you look at these chalk colors, they have what's called a pastel look. They're these soft muted colors. Uh artists who work with chalk might even work outside. They might use chalk on the pavement or on the sidewalk. There um is a type of artist called a sidewalk artist um who might actually do artwork on a sidewalk and then when it rains, the art disappears but chalk would be something people would use if they are creating artwork outside on a building, on a wall or on the pavement or the sidewalk. This is what's called a painter's palette. So, a painter's palette is anything flat where the painter can put all of their different paints and then they can use their brush and they can mix the colors together to make new colors on the palette and then they can paint on their canvas. So, this painter's palette is well used. By the way, palette is also used to refer to um the colors you use when you design something. So, when you create a painting, your color palette may be oranges and browns. That might be the palette you're using. So, it is it does have a couple of different uses. A painter will often paint on a canvas. Hey, this is actually a better picture of an easel as well. So, this white um flat material is called canvas and it is sitting on an easel. So, the artist has a blank canvas. So, there's nothing on it yet. They have attached it to a wooden frame and put it on an easel and now they are ready to paint. So, let's talk a little bit about where art can be seen. So, the word exhibition and exhibit are kind of used interchangeably in my part of the world. You will need to look up the meanings of these two words depending on where you are. I think they're slightly different in Britain in uh, British English but for me, I could go to an art exhibition. I could go to an art exhibit. I could go to an art show. All of these mean pretty much the same thing in my part of the world. In some parts of the world though, an art show might have a number of art exhibits at the show. So, anyways, for me, an exhibition or an exhibit is a place where they show art. I could say to Jen, do you wanna go to, there's an art exhibit this week in Toronto with uh, the works of Van Gogh. Do you want to go? And so, we could go to the art exhibit and see all of those paintings. So, it's a big huge area where they have put all the paintings on the wall or sculptures or whatever type of art. So, for me, I could go to an art exhibition. I could go to an art exhibit. Um I could go to an art exhibition that has lots of exhibits in it. So, different kinds of art. So, it's uh, somewhat interchangeable but uh, definitely look these words up to get a good sense and put the word art in front. Like, look up art exhibition, art exhibit, art show. So, an art show is the same type of thing. Um in our area, 
there are a lot of wineries and there is a lot of beautiful places to visit in the fall and so, we also have art galleries that will have art shows every once in a while. I think there's actually an art show this weekend where you can go and see different types of art from different painters from different artists. Very cool. And of course, the biggest place, the most formal place that you can go to look at art would be a museum. I believe this is the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. So, if you are ever in Holland and you want to see the um the works of art that were created by Vincent Van Gogh, you could go to the Van Gogh Museum to see some of them. His artwork is found in a lot of places but this is one of the best places to go from my understanding. Anyone here who is from the Netherlands maybe can tell us but uh the Van Gogh Museum would be one of the places I would love to go someday. I just think that would be really cool and really fun. Hey, we're gonna do some members only questions. Let me get that set up for a second here. Let me make the switch so that chat becomes members only. By the way, if you are not a member, you can become a member if you want. There is a button below that says join. Um but if you're not a member, you don't need to be one but don't leave because the lesson will continue in about eight or nine minutes. I'm just going to take the time right now to answer questions from members from the chat and I will also answer questions uh from the forum as well. Uh Musa says, it's actually a picture of me when I'm still a small kid. Oh, I see. Uh Musa is talking about artwork. Very cool. Um let me get a question on the screen uh while we're waiting for um members to come up with a question. I got a few questions here. SD says, what is the difference? Um it's a little fix there on the question. What is the difference between sculpture and statue? So, my understanding is sculpture refers to anything that's three-dimensional, three-dimensional art and a statue would be a sculpture of a person or animal. Let's look up an official definition meaning of statue. A carved or cast figure of a person or animal. There you go. So, statue is a sculpture of a person or animal. That's how I would interpret that. Let's see here. From Maryuri and then I'll get to members. Does music, singing, instrumental dance is also an art? Yes, definitely. My three-year-old daughter Rhythm watches all your videos with me and she says she wants to meet Bob the Canadian. Well, very cool. I am touched. Um that is awesome that uh she first of all that she watches my videos at that age and um maybe someday we'll see how things go. Over to members chat. Let's see here. Um Musa says, art is long, life is short. That's a very good quote. Art lasts a very long time. Life though is very short. Musa says, be the picture of health. Health. Good 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 advice. Freddie, Bob, there's also the comic strips considered as the ninth art. Some of the boards are so beautiful and worth millions. Do you like comic art? Thanks to you. Yes. So, in particular, I do like Growing up, I loved reading Tintin. I loved reading Asterix and Ublix. I might say it differently than you. Um I do like anime as well. Uh art out of uh Japan. Very, very cool uh that type of artwork. John says, John Wedge, hello, Bob. Good morning. I was late today but I'm glad I managed to get to class, into class. Awesome to see you, John. Musa says, Bob, tree photo is so spectacular. So, interestingly enough, this photo, the tree photo that Musa is talking about. Hopefully, my camera focuses on it. Um interestingly enough, the photo Jen took with um with her phone. It's just a photo with her phone but it turned out beautifully. Um it proves that you don't need an expensive camera to take a beautiful photo. So, thanks Musa. I will let Jen know that you liked the photo. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Do you have books of art at home? What books would you choose to read first? Thanks for the class. So, we have something in English called coffee table books and we do I think we do have a coffee table book of artwork. So, a coffee table book is usually a larger flat book with lots of photos in it that you would keep on a coffee table in your living room. So, I think we do have one with art. I should dig it out. Harry 300 says, Bob, how do people usually describe someone's bad voice when they are singing? Your voice is bad. 
is it too simple, isn't it? Is there any other way? One way people describe someone singing badly is they'll say um they're 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 not on key or they're so you know how when someone doesn't sing the proper notes um but they might actually just say oh their voice sounds horrible or I I don't like the sound of their voice. That would be how they would describe it. Juliana, can you please explain the word art acquisition in a simple way? I couldn't wrap my head around this word. Thank you. I'm going to talk a bit later about art collections and art collectors and I'll talk about that a little bit then as well but someone who likes to acquire art would be called an art collector. Yaroslav, howdy. What particular arts do you like? Well, if we're talking about all forms of art, I like music. I think that would be my favorite form of art although I do love photography as well. Um beautiful photographs. Ralph, hi, Bob. A bit off topic, we say is it art or can I put it in the bin? Is there a similar question in English? Um no, but I do understand the meaning of it. Yeah, sometimes you have things and it's like you know, do we hang it on the wall or do we just chuck it? That would be the very informal way of talking about it. Hey, let me just have a sip of water here and go back. I wanna make sure I didn't miss any questions. Yaroslav, yes, and Ralph. Musa, life imitates art. It's a very cool phrase as well. Key Park, museums are arts created by architects. Yes, so architecture is another form of art. Um the shape and style of buildings is very much a form of art as well. Zeev says, sorry, I'm late. No problem, Zeev. Musa says, art for art's sake. Ah, these are good, great phrases, Musa. An artistic license. That's a good one as well. Uh, artistic license means you create a work of art and you change the subject of the painting or whatever you're um doing in a way that makes it more artistic. So, uh let's see. State of art is the idiom commonly used in Canada. Merci beaucoup. So, state of the art. So, when you say something is modern and new and usually it's technology, you say it's state of the art. This is a state of the art microphone. I can plug this microphone straight into my computer. This is a state of the art microphone. I use a state of the art camera. Does it still focus? Let's see. Oh, it's still working good. I'm happy about that. I did an update to my camera. I think it's working better. Uh, So, anyway, state of the art would refer to anything that's very new. Noriko, hello, sir. There are so many art gardens here in Japan by using rocks, trimmed bushes with a little pond and light up colored leaves at night. Is it common there in Canada? Gardens and parks are common but not as beautiful in my opinion as the ones I've seen in Japan. I've been watching PewDiePie lives in Japan now. I don't know if you know who PewDiePie is. Very famous YouTuber Um, and so, he has been making videos visiting places in Japan and some of them are places like that and they're beautiful. Um we do have beauty here but it's not as refined or I I just find Japanese gardens very attractive. I like the order and the style and the shape and how things are put together. I also watched a documentary from someone called Monty Don and he visited Japanese gardens and I fell in love with them. They're very cool. Uh Eugene said, we went to Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Oh, very cool. That's cool, Eugene. Cool to hear that you were able to go there. I I think it's going to go on my list of things I want to do in life. I would love to visit Holland and France but I would also like to visit that museum. Harry 300, Bob, can you tell me any proper verbs we can use when we are using a blasting brush for food, a basting brush for food? Simply baste. Yeah, you would just say, oh, I'm basting the chicken. I'm gonna baste the chicken right now. By the way, basting is when you take the liquids around a meat that's cooking and kind of put them back on top of the meat or you take butter or oil and you brush it on top. It's called basting. Adi says, hello, teacher. Today, no question. Just check my describe. I will do that at some point. Uh, Zeev says, lots of museums in Israel, art, science, nature, and so on. Yeah, museums are fun. The older I get, the more I like museums. But uh, students in high school sometimes don't always appreciate museums. I think you might need to be older to really appreciate a museum. Um, let's see here. Bethania. Hi, Bethania. Says, hi, Bob. What is your favorite artist? My favorites are Van Gogh and Kedinsky. 
I would say there is an artist named Karelic, a Canadian artist and there and certainly Van Gogh would be one of my favorites as well. I think because of the sunflowers and because we are flower farmers. Musa says, have something down to a fine art is also a good phrase I think. Yes, when you have something down to a fine art, it means you are really good at it and you are just able to do it really, really well. Hey, let me pull up some more questions from the forum. Let's keep moving along here. Jamino, hi, Bob. Love your lesson. Do you think music and painting are on their way out because of the modern technologies such as AI? No, I actually think what will happen is the more AI generated art we have, the more valuable art made by people will become but it will become important for people to be able to prove they made it. So, you might see artwork created and the artist is filmed while they're making the work of art and so, when you buy the piece of art, you get the video of them making it as well as the piece of art. I think that might be the future of art. I think that uh I'm not too worried about AI. Hey, I just got a little error here. Let me do a little audio to. Okay, let's get to the next question. I'm enjoying the questions. Um just real quick, Khalid says, how to improve listening skills? Watch a lot of videos. Turn the subtitles on. Watch the video again. Turn the subtitle off and uh, definitely get an English conversation partner using Preply. There's a link below. Um So, Marin, we admire you for the way that you teach. So, you teach the art of speech. Well, thank you for the compliment. It's interesting. We do use the word art to talk about other things that people do well, right? Like, oh, it's um you know like Noriko was talking about gardens. It's a real art to put together a garden in a certain way. When Jen makes a bouquet, it's a real art when she picks the colors to put the flowers together. So, um Definitely, we use art to talk about a lot of different things. Robert or Robert. Robert, this is a wonderful picture of the tree. I think I can see the tree from your image on Google Maps on the other side of the river. It is actually inspiring. Yeah, the tree is gone now though. It might still be on Google Maps but it was a sad day. The day the tree blew over. I woke up and I said to Jen, the tree blew over and as I mentioned, I grew up on this farm that tree for almost 50 years, for 50 years, that tree was just across the river and now it's just a photograph. So, Jen thinks I should make it into a poster and sell it on the internet. We'll see. I'm not really into doing stuff like that but I'll think about it. Uh let's see here. Hey, we're gonna get back to the lesson in a sec. Um uh let's see here. Yaroslav says, did you like visiting the museums in your childhood? I did a little bit but I think I enjoy it a lot more now. And Musa says, a blank canvas. Whenever we start something, if you build a new house or if you move into a new house or apartment, you say it's a blank canvas. There's nothing on the wall. There's no furniture. You are free to do what you want. Great phrase, Musa. Zeev says, are musicians supposed to be artists? Musicians are definitely also called artists. Like you would say, Ed Sheeran is an artist. Um Drake is an artist. Um and everyone understands that the art they create is music. Uh Yaroslav says, I preferably didn't. Yeah, museums aren't that exciting when you're young. Um I think I liked them a bit but definitely way more now. Harry says, does don't be greedy at me sound natural? No, it doesn't. I'm not sure what's I'm not sure that we add at someone after the word greedy. No, um we would just say they're greedy. You're being greedy. Um we wouldn't specify that they want something from another person. We would just say, don't take the big cookie. You're being greedy or just take one cookie. Don't be greedy. That's how we would use that phrase. Okay, let me get members only turned off for a moment and then we will finish up this lesson. There's actually not a lot left. We're moving along quite quickly today. So, we're gonna go back to regular uh regular chat. Let me just double check just in case there's one more question. Um there we go. Okay. So, there's also something called an art gallery. So, there is a town close to me that has a few art galleries. An art gallery is a place where um you will see art maybe from one artist or two artists or four or five. An art gallery is a place where you can go to see the art 
but it's often a place you can also go to buy the art. The art gallery that is closest to me sells um art from local artists. So, you can go to the art gallery to see the art but you can also buy a piece of art especially if you are an art collector. So, an art collector is someone who loves art so much that they like to buy works of art to either display in their home or maybe to just keep. Maybe they are using it as an investment or maybe they just like to have art everywhere in their house or at their business. So, an art collector is someone who obviously has money and they have enough money to go out and buy pieces of art or works of art so that they can put it in their art collection. So, an art collector will then have an art collection. They will have their works of art displayed in one room in their house. Maybe they'll have them all stored somewhere. Maybe they don't have them displayed but they definitely have an art collection. Um I don't have an art collection. <laughs> I don't in English we would say I don't have that kind of money. You have to have a certain level of not wealth but you have to have a certain amount of expendable income we would probably say. Extra money that you don't need for food or rent or other things. So, I mentioned earlier about different art forms. There are considered to be seven different art forms. An art form is a kind of art. So, I mentioned painting. I mentioned sculpture. There's literature. So, writing really good stories. Writing can be an art form as well. Architecture. Let me say that again. Architecture. The design of beautiful buildings is considered an art form as well. Cinema which is the same as filmmaking. A filmmaker makes films. And cinema, the creation of movies and film is considered an art form as well as music and live theater or theater. Now, this is the American spelling of theater. I actually spell it slightly differently but painting, sculpture, literature, architecture, cinema, music and theater are considered the seven main art forms. There's some there's other art forms but these are considered the seven main ones. I know Freddie mentioned that um comic strips are considered the ninth art form. I wonder what the eighth art form is then. Be interesting to find out. We also have what's called a patron of the arts. A patron of the arts is different than an art collector. It's also a person who has a lot of extra money. In English, we would say they have a lot of money and they don't know what to do with it (laughs) but a patron of the arts would be someone who directly or indirectly supports an artist with money. So, they might actually buy paintings from the artist to support them. They might actually um give money for the artist to live somewhere and make art for a year. In the a long time ago, kings and queens were sometimes patron of, patrons of the arts. They would pay an artist to live and create works of art for them. So, a patron would be the guy in the gray. The artist is the guy in the yellow. The patron is the guy who says, I will give you money so that you don't have to work so that you can create works of art. And lastly, people asked a few times about the type of art I am able to create. I did not make this but this is called a collage. To me, a collage is the simplest way to create art And it's really the only works of art I've ever created. Mostly when I was younger and in school. A collage is a collection of images. They can be photographs. They can be pictures that you find on the internet and then you put them together in a really, really nice pattern or nice way. So, a collage to me is the simplest form of art and the only form of art that Bob the Canadian is actually good at. I've made a few cool collages in my life. So, again, collage. That's how you would pronounce that. A collection of images. Hey, that's the end of the formal lesson. Let's answer a few more questions before we wrap this up. Let me see if there are any questions in. There are no questions. There are no questions. We're gonna be done early today, everybody. I think that would be okay, isn't it? It's always okay to be done class early. At school, if class ends early, students are really, really excited. I'm sure for you though, if I end class early, it's not as exciting. You would love to have a full hour. So, let's do this. 
If you still have a question, please use the form to ask it in the next minute or two. I'm just gonna have a little bit of uh, a read through the chat to see if there's any obvious thing. Uh, Andre says, bonjour, Bob. Some sports like patinage artistique are arts. Yes, ice skating is considered an art. I think it would be under the um, category of theater. So, theater includes acting, dance, and then by extension, ice skating I think is a form of dance and that's where it would fall uh, in terms of art. It's artistry. I don't think I taught the word artistry, did I? Artistry is used to talk about something that is very artistic. Um let's see here. Let me check if there's a question. Still no question. That's okay. Les art mediatique are Art. Oh, the VTM art. Les art mediatique. Oh, merci beaucoup. So, that is what Freddie Wolf is saying. Les art mediatique is the is the eighth art form. Uh, Sophia says, it is an awesome lesson. I think the art makes people happier. The photo by Jen is beautiful and reminds me about movies by Andre Tarkovsky. Jen is really good at taking photos. She is. It's fun to see her photos um, when she takes some photos. And one of my kids is also really good at taking photos. So, that's kind of cool. Uh Harry says to Dave the Canadian, thank you so much, Dave. Actually, I just wanted to know about some adjectives that we can add prepositions plus someone like disappointed in, angry at. You told me one more jealous of. I should do a whole lesson on that. He's mad at me. She's jealous of the fact that I have more money. Yeah, there I should I'm gonna make a note of that. Renata says, thank you so much for this lesson. I hope thou hast a great day. I'm gonna come back to the 21st century now. That's awesome, Renata. It was good to see you. Um hey folks, let me see here. One question and then we're gonna wrap it up. Harry 300. Bob, is there any term to describe a condition where we stop working in a polite way like we send a letter or explain the reasons and so on? Uh we would just say, how could I describe that? There's something called quiet quitting right now where you keep doing your job. You just don't work very hard. It's a new term, quiet quitting. So, some people who don't like their boss or don't like their job, instead of quitting, they just don't work hard and it's called quiet quitting. Um but I would just say um yeah, I don't know if there's I would just say the person's become they've become difficult. When you say that and I'm like oh, my colleague's just being very difficult right now, it means they're not happy. They're not cooperative. They're not being very friendly. It's not a nice situation when someone you work with uh starts to be difficult. We use the word difficult to describe people for sure. Um Dennis, I do have one more question. Dear teacher Bob, please tell what kind of arts do your are your kids interested in? Well, all kids when they're young love painting. It's very messy but kids love painting. So, we sometimes would put newspapers on our kitchen table and then the kids would have a piece of paper and paint. Kids definitely like coloring which is when you take crayons and you have a book of pictures that are just the black outline and you you color in. Um but now as our kids get older, one or two of them, two of them actually really like photography. Um some of them like graphic design. That's where you use a computer to create images. So, that would be what I would say the most common um things my kids are interested in. Okay, folks, that's the end. We're gonna wrap this up. By the way, I say that a lot and people often ask about it. When you wrap something up, it means you you end it or you bring it to an end. So, I'm going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the 375 people who are here. If you're new, don't forget to click this button. If you wanna be a member, click the join button to get some more information. If you need one-on-one English lessons, there's a link below to a place called Preply. I highly recommend you check it out. It will cost you money but having an English speaking partner is just super helpful. So, do check that out um just to get an idea of what it would cost you. But one 30-minute English conversation once a week will really help your English learning. Thanks to Dave for being here and helping uh moderate the channel. Thanks to all of you for being kind and helpful and polite in the chat. You guys are all awesome and I'm gonna start saying bye. Bye to Noriko, Vitor, Zeev, Lolly, Lolly, Dave of course, Wanda, Ricardo, Vitor, Ralph, Vitor. I, I said Vitor three times now I think. Uh Lolly, Lolly, Huawei, 
CS Team, John Wedge, Harry 300, uh, Hiwa, Renata, um, just watching the chat, Key Park, um, Jazerniski, Andres, Anuat, Case, um, and everyone else. Bye to all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great Friday. Um, and uh, enjoy a piece of art today. Go somewhere and look at a piece of art. Even if it's just on the internet. Take some time to appreciate um an artist's work in some way today. Bye everyone. Uh oh by the way, I always forget to say this. This video will come out in a couple days in a shorter version. No user questions. A really nice way to reinforce what you've learned. Uh watch it a second time. Listen to it a third time next Monday or Tuesday as well. Um it's just a good habit to get into when you are learning a language. I hope this lesson was helpful. It was fun to teach. Um uh, I'll have to see what class I end up being a substitute teacher in this week and maybe there will be another lesson idea for me. We'll see. Anyways, bye everybody. Have a good day and a good weekend.